Okay, so in the last video we wrapped up by assembling the shore block. Now uh, we need to start working on, I think what I'm going to start doing is working on all these gears and like getting the camshaft in, getting the injector pump in, getting all the timing marks lined up, and then all the, the seals and gaskets that go along with that, and getting all this set up and timed. So I think that's the way I'm going to, probably mostly what this video is going to be about. And, yeah, it's been about three months since I took this apart, and I did take a number of pictures while I was disassembling it, in case I need to really reference something important. But uh, you can kind of see, yeah, all those parts in that bin need a home. So, yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a, a puzzle and uh, going back and forth looking at old pictures and stuff and making sure I'm putting things together properly. But, yeah, I, I, I kind of got my I kind of got my work cut out for me today. Or this week, at least. So, let me get studying on that a little bit, and uh, we'll see what we can do. So, I got this uh, sitting straight up like that, and I'm going to install the, uh, the the crank timing gear. And it's got the timing marks on the outside here, and that goes on there with a bit of a press fit. And I kind of remember it being a little difficult taking it off. So, I think I'm going to warm that up just a little bit. Not going to get it real hot, but just going to get it a little warm. And uh, hopefully that'll make that go on there a little bit easier. Yeah, it was about uh, 300 when I when I brought it over. That seemed to make that slide on pretty easily. And it's seated down there in the bottom, so I guess I'm ready to move on. Let it cool off a little bit, then I'll move on. I was about the, the idea I had, because it's been so long since I've taken this apart, and I do have the manual to help me a little bit, but it's not telling me everything. And what I was going to do is I was going to put this, this timing gear on first and kind of time everything kind of like from the inside out. But I kind of realized when I did that, put that over there, was blocking this hole and blocking a pin there. And I kind of had to remember why that pin was there and why this other pin was here. And it's to mount this on and align it on there. So, I'm kind of thinking I might, I'm going to try putting this gear on last and see how I do that way. And the other thing I want to do is, there's a bunch of springs that go along with this. I'm going to try to get all that set up first too before I, so basically I'm going to do the injector pump camshaft first and then we'll see how we go. Alright, now I just want to get the camshaft kind of fitted in there and get that out of the way. And the manual asks for about 20 foot-pounds on that, so that's what I'm going to do. And then it'll hold the, uh, the injector pump cam in place. I honestly can't remember if this came with a, a gasket on it or not from the factory, but this gasket came with the kit and it looks like it goes on there just right. And the other thing about this oil pump is that it's the original oil pump that came off of it, but I uh, I, dis I did disassemble it, clean it, and inspect it, and it looks good, so I don't see any reason why not to reuse it. The book didn't really have a spec on that, but it has a spec for bolts about that size, so I think I'm going to try torquing it to what they say. Something like about seven foot-pounds. Six. Let's see how that seems. Seems about right. So I went with six foot pounds on that. So it's a little hard to see, but I got the timing marks on all the the crank gear, the the timing or the idle gear, and the injector pump gear and the cam gear. They've got the marks lined up on there. So if Three on that one, timing marks, two dots there and there, got those marks, those teeth lined up, mark right there, so there and there, so these teeth here are lined up. All those gears are timed, I did not see a timing mark for the oil pump drive gear, yeah, I didn't see one there so I just installed it, and I didn't see a torque spec for that so I put it at 20 foot pounds. And I installed that the same way I installed that one. I just warmed it up to about 250 to 300 degrees. 
because it had a bit of a press fit there and just warming it up a little bit like that well kind of warm pretty hot it uh it made that slide on a lot easier i did have to tap it tap it on a little bit but it went in pretty smoothly so let's uh okay i got those lined up in time so let's move on so now what goes on here is what's called a what the book calls a oil slinger an o-ring and i'm guessing that's the right one i can't really tell for sure and then a collar that goes on there when i took this off i doubt that it's directional but i wrote on which side of it was the outside and i'm just going to put that notch so that it's uncovering the uh the timing mark there i'm just going to put this o-ring in place and then i'm going to put the collar on this one has a generous chamfer on it so i'm going to put that down so let's put it on there like that and that seems like it's about right and then finally now that those are in place there's a keyway here that takes this this key and can install that. All right, so what I'm trying to do today is get everything set up for the injector pump to fit in there. And what I'm trying to remember, based on the manual and the pictures that I took before, is how all the springs fit. And it looks like one of the springs actually attaches to the timing cover itself so it looks like I need to put that on before I go any further with the rest of it the kit came with three different gaskets and this one seems to be the, the gasket that fits the, the best on here what I did was I sprayed some of that copper gasket sealant onto here it's gonna serve two purposes it's a it's gonna seal the gasket a little bit against some possible oil leaks but B it's gonna uh, act as a glue to hold the, the gasket in place. So I've sprayed that on there, I've let it dry quite a bit, and uh, it seems like it's basically glued into place right now so that I don't have to worry about it getting you know misaligned as I'm trying to install it. So basically like there's, a, there's like several things that would have to line up in order for me to get this on the engine properly. And that's the block, the timing cover, the gasket, and then the manual called for four different o-rings there are three here and one here that's a coolant passage there and these ones here are oil passages that one came with the kit seems to fit properly these two here came with the kit and they seem to fit properly but this one here didn't come with the kit and uh, none of the ones that came in the kit fit this one properly so even so the the uh the manual calls for an o-ring here but it didn't the kit didn't seem to have one to fit it properly so i've pulled one out of my o-ring assortment and uh i'm going to use that in there now the other problem was the recesses that these o-rings fit into aren't very deep and it was going to be very very likely that when i went to put this thing on the engine that all these either the gasket or the o-rings or whatever were going to get out of alignment or fall off or who knows what so I didn't have a real great solution to that but what I did do was I just used some some super glue and I've never done this before I've never super glued o-rings in place before but that's what I did here so I've super glued all four of them into place so that when I go to put this on there they're not gonna fall out and it does seem to me like the super glue seems to be holding it pretty well and I'm just going to let that dry on there for, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes maybe. And uh, hopefully these O-rings seal and they stay put. But uh, that'll be something that'll remain to be seen. And then one other thing is uh, that larger O-ring at the top seals into this area here. And you can kind of see that that's mildly corroded there. So I think what I'm going to do is just put a very, very thin film of silicone on there gray silicone on there to help prevent that from leaking at all because if that leaks there basically what it'll do is it'll leak coolant into the crankcase okay so i did get the uh the timing cover in place uh super gluing those o-rings in place i've got my fingers crossed held them in place good enough and gluing that uh gasket in place i hope i'm hoping that that uh 
that that worked out as well. And then the other thing I had to do was uh, get, the next thing I had to do is get this, this piece here, which is essentially the throttle. There's three springs inside here all together. One of them attaches from here to the front of the timing cover. So there's the first spring. And then there were two other springs attached to the lever that's attached to this inside of here. And uh, I was a little bit apprehensive about doing it because if I dropped the springs, they would have fallen inside the, they might have fallen inside the timing cover. And then I'd had to take that all apart and it would have been a big mess. And it, anyway, and, it, and they needed to be on there right in order for the governor to work right. So but what I, I think I might be able to do is show you what it looks like inside there maybe. Maybe. I guess you can just barely see them. There's there's two springs and there's there's a light there's a bigger spring and then a smaller spring. The the smaller spring goes inside of the uh, the bigger spring. Yeah, real hard to see. But it is in there. And then I'll operate the and they they attach onto that that slotted part of that other sh that other uh, lever that's in there. So I think I can get it from another angle maybe too. I think that's about the best I can get of it. So there's two springs there and then there's another spring in behind there that you can't see. The only other thing that happened there was that this uh, there was supposed to be a gasket in that kit for this and I couldn't find it in the kit and I looked around online and I had a hard time I didn't see it available individually I'm not gonna say it's not available I just didn't see it so rather than wait who knows how long to get that gasket even if I could find it I uh, I silicone that and then finally what I did was I adjusted this and what I did was I took a picture of that before I disassembled it or before I took this out and I needed to back that all the way out in order to give this enough room so that I could uh, remove those springs during disassembly but um, what I did was I took a picture of that and I was able to count how many threads were exposed on that nut or that screw there and there were about 14 that's how many I counted so I just uh, I just turned that in until it was about 14 threads showing on that screw. And then what that seemed to do was it uh, just kind of took the slack out of this. It just kind of took the slack out of that one, that larger spring. So we'll see. Uh, basically what I think that'll do, I think what, I, what I'm kind of thinking is that light spring that's inside of there might be the idle spring. And then this might be like the the higher you know like the throttle the raise the your uh, your engine speeds that's how i think that works i mean that's what this thing is supposed to do is like adjust you know set the whatever speed you want the engine at i think the th next thing to do would be to install the injector pump the engine block was decked so material was removed off of this surface and it was twelve thousandths taken off of that whole surface there and what that means is that since twelve thousandths was taken off of here that's going to make the injector pump sit down towards the uh, the injector pump camshaft and there are 12 thousandths closer and what was saying in the uh, manual is that moving the injector pump up and down will affect the injector timing and we don't want to change that when I was taking it apart what I noticed was it had these I thought at first that they were just gaskets they're they're actually shims and what I was able to find was those are the original ones what I was able to find was a couple more and they were both about six thousandths thick each so that will shim my injector pump back up the uh, the twelve thousandths that was taken off of the deck so let me get this all oiled up get these in place and we can start installing the injector pump let's uh, move on from here now I'm just going to install the stop lever.
All right, now I'm just gonna install this rear cover here. Just in case anybody's an expert with these things here and you know how to adjust this screw that's on the back of the, uh, the injector pump, I'd like to hear about it, if you know how to do it. So, what we got done this week was we got all the timing components in, got the timing cover on, got the injection pump in with the governor springs and all the levers and stop levers attached. So, I have to remain to be seen whether or not I adjusted any of that properly. But at any rate, uh, that's about all I got time for this week and kind of what took up a lot of my time in the beginning of the week was, uh, or the end of last week, was um, finishing up what I had to do with that 383 for that other guy. And, uh, but uh, we, we wrapped that up and I sent it back home with him. Uh, I wish I could have gotten a little bit further on this, but unfortunately that's all I got time for this week. And uh, I guess we'll see you next time.